pricing theory. You know, if you if you go out and you look at uh, the mechanics of pricing and you look at it as a traditional economics or an accounting prospect to it, if you do price accounting or, or cost accounting, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. And the reason is, is that when people calculate their cost accounting, it's based on a percent of utilization. So if you say, okay, my total cost for the shop is um, twenty thousand dollars, and um, I've got uh, twenty days in the month, I've got to do a thousand dollars a day, and so if I divide that thousand dollars a day by eight hours, that's one hundred and twenty-five dollars an hour. Well, that's assuming that you're working a hundred percent of the time, and in reality, when we measure shop efficiencies, and we've done this hundreds of times. The shop efficiency typically is between somewhere around 24 to about 33%. Uh, when you take out brunch, you know, uh, lunches, breaks, approvals, packing, changing the press over, setting the press up, your actual production time is about 24, 25 to 30, 33%. That triples or quadruples the cost per hour. So if you're basing your cost on $125, it's gonna end up being more like 375 to $500 an hour is your true cost. So by using cost accounting, you actually set yourself up for coming up on the short end of deal. I tend to price jobs based on value and you know, value, there's many, many components that go into value. The really powerful aspect about using value-based pricing is that you eliminate your competitors when you do it. You are defining what value is and you're defining it in the terms that your customer is looking for. Your competitors are all about themselves. They're about their cost, their methods, their prices, and they're not satisfying the client, so there's no connection there. But when you start talking on the customer's terms and you're delivering value based on what's important to them, then your pricing you know, becomes much more elastic and you're able to charge much more for what you do. It's very interesting that you're asking me this because the place that I'm gonna send you to is Mark Kudre's video on Printavo. I'm forgetting exactly what the title of it is, but it has to do with pricing. Look for Mark Kudre and pay attention to that little 18 minute bit of wisdom. Mark and I have talked about these particular problems for over 25 years, more than that. In the early days, we used to get together at impression shows like we're at right now. And he and I would meet up in a hotel lobby at 11.30, talk till two in the morning, and typically we'd both have a story about the guy that just chiseled us out of a nickel. That, you know, I did the job, I did the work for them last time, and they went across the street to somebody else for a nickel. So there's always that problem of where they're gonna go if they're going only for price. So you have to bring a value. You have to bring an experience. You have to bring more to it. Why do you wanna to go to certain restaurants? Why do you wanna buy certain cars? Why do you wanna to go to certain hotels? The hotel room when you're sleeping in it is basically the same if it's a Holiday Inn Express or the Ritz Carlton. But when you, when you go to the Peninsula Hotel, they pick you up at the airport in a Rolls Royce. There's a different, now it costs a lot more money. Is the extra experience worth it? Are you providing a real service? I was just in some places the last two days buying tires. And I had to go to four completely different places because it was a hard problem to deal with. And the difference in customer service that I got, I went with the most expensive, mostly because they were the nicest and I knew it was gonna get done better. So price didn't matter to me much. It was only a, a few, dollars uh, difference, but I had no problem going to the, to the better experience. But what Mr. Kudre teaches you in his video is that when you're looking at the profit that you make, that if you're going from, let's say, one to 50 prints and it's the same price, the 50th shirt is a different price than the 51st shirt, which you might go 51 to 99 or 51 to 100. The problem is, is that you will literally not get any profit when you print 51 shirts, whereas you will make a profit printing 50 shirts because you've dropped the price and what you're doing is you're dropping your profit. I'm not explaining this well in this short amount of time, but I, I, I want people to understand that they should be making a profit. Mr. Kudre introduced me to a book, uh, Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. And I think that every entrepreneur, especially entrepreneurs that don't have a lot of administrative staff, should be focusing on whether or not you're going after jobs that are making money. And there are many jobs that maybe you should turn down because, you know, uh, and, and I, 
don't even get me started on contract printing. I can't believe how many people I'm meeting that are very happy to do contract printing. And that scares me uh, a lot because there you have to be an expert printer. You gotta move the work through the shop and you gotta behave like you're in a pit stop to make money as a contract printer. Like pretty much 98% of all shops copy other shops pricing. That's what people do. And all shops are underpriced, right? So what you need to do is there's a price demand curve. As price goes up, demand goes down. And you want to find the perfect like intersection of above average price is going to make you money where your demand is not too low. I've been raising my price gradually over time as we begin busier and busier. Every time we get real busy, I raise my price. Some pe people fall off. That's my pricing strategy is that I just try and keep adjusting my price upwards. You know why? It's because every year my costs go up. My rent goes up every year. It's in my lease. My wages go up every year because I give my people raises. Uh, I always try and add benefits to you know, my, my employees so they have more reasons to stay with us. And as my costs increase, I need to increase the amount of money I charge to other people as well. Raise your price. If we stop undercutting ourselves, cutting each other, then you know, we started doing that with the streaming equipment. We started selling equipment for more. And now other people sell streaming equipment. Don't be scared of that. I wouldn't be scared of, to, to raise your price a little bit and make a product worth paying for. Work that, that, that lasts a long time. You know, do time studies. Figure out how long it actually takes you to print jobs. How long it takes you to set up screens, scrape screens, clean screens. Figure out how long it actually takes to do your job, and then figure out how much it costs you to run your business per hour. A lot of people go out of business because they undercut their neighbor. Know your revenue per team member. If you have. 10 team members and you're doing a million dollars a year and you're making $50,000 profit, your revenue per team member is 100 grand, okay? If you hire two more people, what do you need to be doing in revenue? 1.2. A lot of people will hire two more people and not do any more revenue. Your profits are gone. I have a different view on pricing that will differ than with most people might differ with you. You have to know your own costs. You have to know what it costs to print a shirt in your shop. I disagree with that. And it's only because the market is dictating the price. You've got 50 shops in an area, they've all got their price. You've got customers everywhere. And if your shop is in a brand new building and you're driving a brand new car and your overhead is way high, and so you've got a price high because of all that, well then you're kind of doing it wrong. But I think the market dictates price. But let's say a small shop who's doing not, he's not busy every day. He's busy now and then. He's doing 100 shirts here and 500 shirts there. It's hard to then peg a number on that. He may be too high for his overhead based on how many shirts he can print. So I have an attitude that you need to adjust your pricing and see where the market is. I feel that your competition is often custom ink, got guys like that. Not that you need to compete with them, but those guys are driving what the customer sees. Do I pay for a screen? Do I not pay for a screen? Do I pay for art prep? Do I not pay for art prep? Oh, you're charging me for art prep. I can go online and get an art prep for free. Well, they're probably just tossing it in. They're just, they're, they're getting covered for it. And maybe they're a little more money, but in the customer's mind, he's getting free art. And so I think the market tells you where the pricing needs to be within reason. Pricing your work, I think, is very difficult. You know, you can analyze all the different costs, but way more costs than in other industries, I think the costs are fixed. So you think of labor as, you know, a variable cost, depending on how much you're printing, but it's really more fixed than that. You can't really let your skilled people go. One thing for sure is that you do not want to be the cheapest price. Like just trying to be the cheapest, I don't see that working for anybody. I see that as a fast track to going out of business. I'm a consultant. I've been doing that for a very long time. As I travel, I hit pricing that is so varied. It's best to be known as the best in town with the highest prices than it is to be the lowest price in town. The only way you get that high price, you have to put out a quality product on time with great customer service. If you can do those things, then you charge more. And the fact that they can get it done by somebody else down the block for, for less then why are you here? If you could get it done for less, why are you coming to see me when you can? And chances are there's something that isn't being done quite the way they want. Delivery may not be on time, quality may not be there, or they may just find the person difficult to deal with. And that's part of customer service. You know, jumping on a problem and resolving it as quickly as possible is part of the deal.